Hi, I'm Miss Lonnie. I'm a teaching artist with PS Arts. I teach TK through second grade in Santa Monica, California. And about right now, I'm missing my students, so I thought I would bring you some projects that you could do right on your tabletop. A lot of these lessons will be drawings, so it'll be easy for you to find materials like just paper, color pencils, pencils, markers, things like that. We'll do some collaging, so you might need a glue stick and scissors and just various materials that you might have. So our first artist is Ellie Halpin. She was raised in Alaska and now she resides in Austin, Texas. And so let's have a look at her work. I hope you enjoyed Ellie Halpin's art. I just love her work with all the color and patterns and the way she accents what's special about an animal like the elephant's trunk or the lion's mane um, and sometimes adds extra texture um, with objects like paintbrushes and sequins and different materials like that. Um, today we're just going to do a simple elephant drawing and we're going to use a process called zentangling for the color and patterns. Smaller piece of drawing paper that I'm going to use on top of a larger piece that's going to kind of act as my placemat today so that I protect my surface. Even though I'm only using drawing pencils, I just like to work that way. So um, we're gonna start with the drawing pencil. You can use a number two pencil if you don't have a drawing pencil at home, that's fine. And we're gonna use colored pencils. So we're gonna start um, at the top of the page and we're gonna just make a nice big S for the start of our elephant. Then at the tips, we're gonna do little curves. It's almost kind of like a fishtail here. And it follows the S back up, but then it doesn't keep following it. It stops about here and goes out to meet the top of the elephant head. Then the next thing you're gonna need is big ears. So I'm gonna start by putting a nice big elephant ear and to give it some movement, I'm gonna do some nice wiggly lines. On the other side, same thing. And saving a little space for some elephant tusks here. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is make kind of a big square, kind of where the ears are. I'm going to stop and go behind the trunk. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Go all the way down. Then I'm going to just put like a, and kind of like the start of a triangle to separate the legs. Then I'm gonna put some nice little humps here for the elephant's toenails. That was probably more than I needed there. Anyway, there you go. Nice little elephant toenails, and then um, you might see two legs coming from behind here. I think I'll just put one, so it's kind of like a little bit sideways leaning. So you'd start down and then go across, and of course it's smaller because it's behind 
where the elephant is and that's a, a great art trick is anything that's further away is always smaller. All right, now I'm going to start putting in some lines that are going to provide the space that I was talking about for the Zentangle process. Um, put some eyes here first. And then I'm just going to start making some lines on the trunk. Now to Zentangle, all you're going to do is create space to add patterns, polka dots, stripes, solid colors, different things like that. I don't know if um, that's what Ellie Halpin does as far as her process, if it's the Zentangling process, but uh, this is a good thing to use for her elephant work. Now I'm going to just separate a couple of areas on the ear, kind of do the same thing. Maybe some polka dots. Little curvy lines. Maybe on the other side, I'll do the same thing. And I'll do some nice swirly things in this side of the ear. All right, um, I'm gonna put a little jewel on the head of my elephant, and maybe some little wrinkly knees. It's kind of hiding behind there. You might even see see the tail swinging out here. You could do that as well. You might want to put a little horizon line where some ground is, or maybe a tree can be behind the elephant. Some roots here. I'm going to zentangle my tree as well in keeping with the design style I'm using for this picture. So I think I have as many lines as I um, want now, and I'm going to get started with the coloring. I like to outline on top of the drawing pencil. It adds a little extra pop. Um, put a little blue diamond inside here. You can also outline with one color and then fill it in with another. When you're doing this process of um, using this Zentangle, Zentangle technique, Work. Oh, there goes my pencil. Sometimes I push too hard. Um, use one area at a time. Then you'll really get a nice result. Now there is a technique that I'd like to uh, bring up right now called a shading grade, which you can use with um, just your drawing pencil, but you can also use this technique for extra texture uh, for the colored pictures as well. So I'm just going to put a rectangle and separate it into a few boxes here. So in the first box, you would leave it just the way it is because that's the lightest box so nothing goes in there. In the second one you would make some horizontal lines. You don't push very hard just nice and light so obviously that's darker than the last one. Then you do the same thing in the next box but this time you're going to add vertical line on top of that and don't use any extra pressure and you're going to see that it's going to get darker with each direction that you change. So you're going to start horizontal vertical and now I'm gonna go diagonal and you'll see without any extra pressure I'm automatically getting a darker um, shade there the last one well I've been starting horizontal so I'll keep it going that way horizontal vertical diagonal and then go diagonal the other direction 
And again, with no extra pressure, you're getting darker and darker. Um, again, this works with color as well. What, another thing you want to be careful of is when you're drawing the area one at a time, one shape at a time, it'll make everything nice and crisp. And it really, you can really tell if you work hard on it and color it just a little, one little space at a time. Think of little squares at a time or something. Remember, try different directions too, to kind of give it a different texture to it. And you keep going and keep going, your tree, do everything, um, until you're finished with this coloring process. Please send pictures of your finished Ellie Halpin inspired elephants to craftbag at yahoo.com because I'm going to be adding some of your pictures to our next art lessons. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Stay safe out there, everyone.